Hello, people. Welcome to a bite-sized nugget of a podcast featuring your boy, the greatest man that's ever lived in the galaxy named the Fang of the Wild. And then there's uh, Galactic. Of course. Galactic's always here. And no, no. You gotta say your voice. It's gonna like that. You gotta say it. You gotta say that low. Like, like, it's, like your ASMR. Just be like... Oh, I got it. Hey guys, it's Galactic here. <laughs> <laughs> no man, that was fucking ugly. But yeah, today we're not uh, we're not here full. I'm gonna call this a bite size episode. The name of this episode is probably gonna be a chunk of change or something. I, I don't know, but um, gotta take a chunk of change from us on Thursday. Yeah, I, I've already paid for mine. You already know. So yeah, I just need to buy my games. <laughs> but yeah. Same here. Um, so the front of the first things we're gonna talk about is the Roman Reigns thing, man. Look, mm-hmm. I like what Roman Reigns is doing, yeah. but what I don't like are certain things happening on my goddamn screen. You you, you saw what happened with uh um Jay Uso and beating up Daniel Bryan. No, besides the, besides the Daniel Bryan one, right? I with the, uh, the fact that he's just going along with it, or no, Kevin no, Owens? no. All right, look, listen, look, listen here, look, look, look here, listen, listen here. Mm. I'm copying Wings of Redemption. Um. So remember what I said when Jay Uso cleanly beat AJ Styles? That was messed up. Yeah, and it didn't make any sense. It didn't make no sense. So not only did this man Jay Uso just beat AJ Styles, he beat Daniel Bryan and then attacked Daniel Bryan after that. And then he beat um he just beat Kevin Owens. And I'm like, yo, there there's a certain people I just don't understand. And and that like that was the final straw to me. I'm like, yo, Jay Uso shouldn't be cleaning beating cleanly beating some of these people. Like at all. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they're trying to push him and build him up to mid card because his brother won't be back for a while. I Who mean, knows? yeah, but one of the things they did with the man is they put him on commentary last time his brother, or a couple of times ago when one of the brothers got injured. They put the other brother on commentary, which is okay, mm-hmm. but it was just like okay, they didn't put him in matches that were even. I'm going no. Like, if Jey Uso was to beat Brock Lesnar, right, right now, would you not be like, uh, huh? It wouldn't be believable. It wouldn't be believable. So Based on what we've seen. Yeah, so some of these matches that he's winning cleanly, to me, are not believable. Yeah, and that, that completely makes sense. You know, WWE is, um, they're not the best at uh, making believable matchups anymore, it's sad to say, to be honest. A lot of the things that happen on the screen are just like, okay, I don't believe that. It, thank you, and it doesn't make any goddamn sense. And I'm like, uh, you guys, are, you guys realize that you just had what's his name beat a person that literally is one of the best in the co- what? <laughs> yeah, sometimes, like I said, you know, WWE is a lot like Disney sometimes, where you just have to turn your brain off and. uh just go with it. <laughs> sometimes. Just sometimes. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta go with it. But then you're like, I, I don't really want to turn my brain off no more. So, like, sometimes I just don't want to turn my brain off. Like, just to, just to play, or just to, just to watch something when I'm like, yo, turning my brain off sometimes is just very agitating. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't want to turn my brain off every time I watch WWE. I just, I, I just, uh, I just want to watch a show with intelligence. Like, did you see um, Cody Rhodes in that promo that he did? Um, I didn't get to see it, but I heard it was really good. A lot of people were talking about it online, actually. So that's good. Yeah. Something I need to look into. It's at AEW, I've been letting them build up. I want to see what they can do. Um, once they get to that status where they have the money to like complete 100% take over WWE, like 
completely compete. That's what I'm saying. Like head to head with them, which they are like match wise. But when you come when it comes to money, you know what I'm saying. Oh yeah, they don't yeah. have like, all that stuff right now. Yeah, but they are currently winning. I can tell you that without mm-hmm. even definitely definitely. Like, they, they, they've they've been hear. winning in the ratings and everything. And for me, it's 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 not surprising at this point. Oh, yeah. I'm just laughing my ass off, and I'm wondering why WWE. They always focus on the other, the opposite team, but they didn't forget what they have, and they don't make sense. Like again, you're not gonna be able to tell me that Jay Uso should have beaten like three people now. Okay, he should not have been beating these three people. He should have obviously yeah. lost, and then Roman Reigns should have got mad at him for losing. But you are not about to tell me this man. Oh yeah, yeah, man. He he beat he beat uh, such and such. So now he's a threat. Like no, fucking no. He's not a threat. It just makes me look at the damn screen. Like, does anybody watch wrestling? Like, does this make sense? Oh, he beat AJ Styles. Like, I, I don't give a fuck if he beat a- AJ Styles. He, he should not have beaten AJ Styles. He should have probably lost to AJ Styles. Something fierce. Like, what the fuck, man? You know, it's these creative decisions that and sometimes we just gotta uh, uh, deal with it. I mean, I, I get hate it. it. I hate it. Uh, I hate it with a passion. But again, that's yeah. why AEW and New Japan Pro Wrestling are like shitting on this company. And there's nothing they can do. New Japan Pro Wrestling is about to have a big event that's happening. And it is right. the shit. AEW has another event happening. It's going to be the shit off of just one of the matches alone. That's Darby Allen versus Cody Rhodes, and you already know that's going to be a fire match. Like, yeah. yo. And then I also like AEW because they can cross promote with other companies. Any company that can cross promote with another company automatically makes you better for me. Like, if you want to, hey, I want to appear on Lucha Underground and harass this person, or I'm going to appear in this other joint and harass this person. Like, yeah, it makes it more um, likable. Yes. It makes it more, you know, exciting for fans anyway. It, exactly. Like when Darby Maybe. Fight, uh, fought Velveteen Dream, because that's when NXT was, you know, kind of like that. But then Vince was like, nah, nah, no more of that. Yeah. Yeah, that's unfortunate that, um, we have to deal with Vince McMahon and all that foolishness because, let's be honest, um, what what doing that is is actually like a long term investment. Maybe you do lose some money um, along the way, Mister McMahon. But like, hey, now you get a bunch more people who are maybe fans of these other company, now fans of your company as well, and you make more money in the long run by just simply cross promoting. I don't know why you do that. It's kind of dumb in my. If if like I honestly were in charge, I would do it. No matter how much money you lose, in the long run, you're making more fans by cross promotion. Yes, you make mm-hmm. more. But I feel like you make more money that way. You would like that's what I'm saying. It's a long term investment because sure you'll probably lose money if if you have them because you know on your program or whatever. But in the long run, you're making more fans. More fans mean more money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I don't know. Maybe Vince is just stuck in this short-term thought, short, short-term thought process. He is. That's why his, uh... <laughs> that's why his, um... Like his way of thinking is literally losing customers on a daily basis. Like this Thunderdome shit. I don't know if you noticed, but a lot of people literally are not liking this uh, this Thunderdome. Yeah, and I get that. That's I bet saving Mr. McMahon some money some. by doing the Thunderdome yeah. and not moving around all the time. But like, it, but you know what he could do normally, right? Uh, he can do what New Japan does and stay in one fucking spot. But no, they have to travel. Why do they have to travel? I don't know. You know how many times NXT travels? They travel during their takeover events. 
That's where they yeah. travel. Other than that, they stay in the same spot. That's why wrestlers don't want to leave. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot better if I can, I don't know, go to one place, stay in one state. I could more easily have a family, you know, but WWE treats all their uh, workers like work horses, so it kinda, it's kind of upsetting yeah. um, going through all that. Like, I know personally I would never work for, uh, not for WWE, at least, you know. Like, if I was a wrestler, right, and you was like, would you choose such and such or WWE? I choose anywhere but WWE after hearing horror stories and why people left. I'd be like, yeah, okay. Even if they go, we want you on the roster, I'd be like, NXT. NXT or bust. And I never get called up because I'm not going. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to help my mic. I'd be like, I'm NXT or bust. That's it. <laughs> like, seriously, would, would you rather be an NXT or on Raw right now? <laughs> Me, uh, I'd rather be on NXT. Exactly. And that's just because I'm not moving around a lot. You know, it just seems a little bit more convenient. And if you get more exposure, and you fucking get, mm-hmm. you get lo- more loose in your matches versus WWE, which is super stiff. Matt Riddle was so fire down there. What is the last thing Matt Riddle has done since he got called up? Um, see that he went through all them. Uh... Allegation, uh, allegations against him. So it's did been uh, bad. Yeah, and so did uh, so did Velveteen Dream, but Velveteen Dream was in matches. So. Well, he's also in NXT at the moment. Oh yeah, you're right. So that doesn't matter for him. Versus the main card, where everyone on the main roster, Loki represents represents Vince McMahon in some type of way, and you know how he feels about certain things yeah all right no moving on to the second thing we need to talk about here um let's talk about survivor series man i know we're gonna do a thing but survivor series is genuinely looking up to be one of the dumbest pay-per-views i have ever seen you know what's so unfortunate about survivor series to me what the fact that, um, you know, last year we had that great ass build up to it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, NXT came and invaded. And this year it seems like they're not doing anything besides putting Lana through a table. Uh. You know, there's no... Yeah, I, I think the best Survivor Series are the ones where they build up to it. Like, oh my god, they invaded. Oh, what are they doing here? Oh, even though we know damn well, <laughs> you know, that's not like they traveled across the globe or something to reach the SmackDown arena. No, but, you know, those ma- those episodes are the best when they're done right. When Raw invades SmackDown or SmackDown invades Raw. And we have that great buildup. Now it's just like, oh, yeah, so you're going to fight this person. And it just seems like a regular old pay-per-view. Survivor Series is supposed to be hype. You know, it's supposed to be that pay-per-view or one of those pay-per-views that everyone looks forward to because, you know, it's Survivor Series. This year just seems like a, a D pay-per-view, just like one of those pay- those great balls of fire pay-per-view that no one just cared. No one cares about that. It's like <laughs> something like that. But that's what makes it even funny. This is one of the big four, son. And that's, that's what I'm saying. It's like one of those ones that everybody looks forward to. Like, oh my God, a Survivor Series. And then we get what we got. Yeah. yeah, but if you even go back and look at last year's uh <laughs> uh last year's little pay per view, it was fucking fire. We had Bray Wyatt, Daniel Bryan, we had Adam Cole, Pete Dunn, we had mm-hmm. the five on five out five men's triple threat giant, which was fucking <laughs> fire. We had the no holes bars match with Brock Lesnar. Ray, no, that match was stupid. Unfortunately, they ended on a wet fart. Notice the Shayna Baszler, Becky Lynch, and Bailey match. That ended on a wet fart. But like we had, we had fucking Leo Rush versus Akira Tozawa and Kalisto. The Viking Raiders match was pretty good. 
because of the undisputed era was in that match. If it wasn't for the undisputed <laughs> era, that match would have been trash. The the female five on five on five match was okay because of the NXT people. The Roderick Strong versus AJ Styles versus Shinsuke Nakamura was literally the match of of champions. Literally, if that match was on NXT, normally that match would have probably been the fucking match of the year for me. You know what would have made that match even cooler? If they added Adam Cole and Pete Dunne in the match. And probably actually have Sami Zayn had wrestled. And that was like a six-way match. That would have been so fucking cool. I'm sorry. But, yeah, yeah looking back at looking back at the joint, those matches were fire. Granted, the um, one thing that did bug me in the five-on-five-on-five five five match was uh, who got eliminated? I honestly don't remember. Yeah, Walter got eliminated in two minutes, which didn't make no goddamn sense by Drew McIntyre. Oh, me, I remember you were saying that. So Walter got eliminated so quick, and he was on an undefeated streak uh, at the time, I believe. Yeah, he was on an undefeated streak. Uh, that that was bullshit. How Matt Riddle eliminated Ke- uh, no, how King Corbin eliminated Matt Riddle, which was fucking stupid. Mm-hmm. Uh, how he also eliminated fucking Ricochet, and I was like, no, just fucking no. And how Roman Reigns was able to beat Keith Lee, that was also fucking stupid. I forget how they finished that off, or played that off. Uh, I forgot too. And I also was mad that fucking Damian Priest didn't eliminate nobody. Oh, like, huh, you have a hard-hitting roster here. Braun Strowman gets counted out, and then it's like Keith Lee's is a, a, whatever, bro. But I like the fact that NXT won the pay per view. I'm not gonna lie to you, I was super happy NXT won that pay per view. I was also super happy that last two years, no, who won 2018? I'm pretty Raw, sure Raw won Raw 18. Winning. Raw won 18. Fucking SmackDown run seventeen, right? Or I believe, I believe, because it's not the year with uh, Daniel Bryan as the GM. Was that sixteen? I don't know. W oh, just yeah, forgot. Nah, nah. It, uh, five on five, Team Raw won that joint. But I'm trying to remember who won the most overall. Wasn't it SmackDown that won that joint? I'm pretty sure it was, yeah, that year was SmackDown. I could be wrong. WWE just be, uh, forgettable sometimes. Yeah. It's super forgettable. But, but yeah, like I said, this Survivor Series is looking to be fucking boring, son. <laughs> it's, it's just looking like I, I don't, I don't care. And then I'm, I'm waiting for the next takeover. Like, <laughs> Come on, son. I don't. Are you going to watch it? I mean, we have to. We actually have to. What, uh, Survivor Series? We have to watch Survivor Series. I say they don't, uh, they didn't make anything interesting or worth my while. So I kind of don't want to. But we have you know to. Saying? It's our job. Yep. It's a, it's a part of what we do here. But even looking at the matches, is Team Raw, which is AJ Styles, Keith Lee, Sheamus. <laughs> Braun Strowman and To Be Determined versus Kevin Owens, Jey Uso, King Corbin for some fucking reason, Seth Rollins and To Be Determined. And then the, the female one is Nia, oh God, Shayna Baszler, Mandy Rose, Dana Brooke for some fucking reason, and Lana for some fucking reason versus Bianca Belair, Ruby Wright, and three members. Huh? Ruby Riot and three members. To be determined. Okay, there we go. I read that wrong. Bobby Lashley versus Sami Zayn because that's a match I really, really, really wanted to see. <laughs> you know, a match I also wanted to see: the Street Profits versus the New Day, a team that went from fucking okay to annoying because they're in everything, versus a team that went from very fucking cool to wet farts. <laughs> yeah. Said wet parts. But the black people though, so you know, whatever. Then we got Oscar versus Sasha Banks, which is which is gonna be funny because that's probably gonna be match of the night. 
which Sasha Banks would be a part of again. And then we got Randy Orton versus Roman Reigns, which I did not want to see that match when they were the Shield. Why am I seeing this match again? Mm-hmm. Second, man. And no, one more thing, man. What is Drew McIntyre doing? Why is he attacking this man waiting for to get a title shot? Hmm? Because he's gonna get another title shot, whether we like it or not. <sighs> At this point. Okay, moving the fuck on because I, I don't, I don't, I don't really wanna, I don't want a headache, bro. I don't, I don't want a headache. So we're just gonna move on and and, and talk about the next subject here. Mm. Because next podcast, if Drew McIntyre does what I think he does, I'm going to fucking scream on the podcast. But moving the fuck on before I end up, you know, headbutting a small donkey. <clears throat> so, are you excited for how many days now? Ah, uh, shit. How many days? I believe it's three. It's three days, man. Three days. In three days. No, it's four. It's four. Oh, it's still four days? It's about to be three days, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it's almost three. Yep. So, in a couple of days, me and you, we'll be running the plot station. In the plot yeah, station. Man. Yeah, man. It's going to be a good good uh, weekend. And I believe you had instructions for how to get your stuff, man. Yeah, guys. <laughs> it's, it's, it shouldn't be that um, hard or complicated. Uh, as Sony said, everything's online only right now. So... Realistically, all you guys have to do um, is look out for Walmart. I say put Walmart at the top of your list because Walmart has four times on Thursday. Uh, the times being 12, uh, 3, 6, and 10, I believe. It's either 10 or 9 that you can pre-order the PlayStation 5 at on Thursday. Um, for Target... It's a bit different. We we already covered what Target's doing, though. They're just um, simply on Thursday. If you get lucky, you can get it online, pick it up. Simple. Same with Best Buy. Um, except I think Best Buy, their quantities, I feel like they're going to be limited compared to Target and Walmart. I think Target and Walmart's going to be heavy hitters. Hmm. And then GameStop just don't even try it. Uh, GameStop literally already has said a bunch of times that no, we are not going to have anything. Um, the only way to get something at GameStop would be to go there and get lucky enough for someone to cancel their pre-order while you're there. Hmm. Uh, the best thing to do for GameStop is wait two days after because you have to two days to pick up your um, PlayStation from GameStop. So if you don't, if someone doesn't do it by then, they can legally sell your PlayStation. So um, on Saturday, you know, if you want to get lucky, just go around to a bunch of different Game Stops and hopefully you get something. Hmm. Besides that, yeah. And as for Xbox, Xbox hasn't really said much, but I can assume that they're going to do pretty much the same thing. Um just go online on they're they're not Thursday. They're tomorrow? Mm. No, not tomorrow. Uh the day after <laughs> Tuesday. They're Tuesday. So on Tuesday, one Xbox, I would say get up bright and early and start uh hitting them websites. Cause you don't know. You, you literally don't know when they could go up. They can go up at any point in time. I mean, like, I heard rumors about Target Target might be putting theirs up the day before and stuff like that, so I'm just like, no. I think your best bet is Walmart in order to recap. So Walmart, then Best, no, Target, then Best Buy. And then if you're really desperate, go two days after GameStop, and you'll end up Maybe finding a console. Maybe. I can't. No one can promise you anything at this point. <laughs> yeah. And there's also um, a bunch of people getting their orders early. Um, 
people that got um, through PlayStation, and I believe that's because UK is on lockdown right now. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, they're on lockdown. So what that means is Sony's been trying to figure out if they're going to push their uh, pre-orders up in the UK from the 19th to like now or whatever. But because of all that chaos, people over here have been getting their PlayStations early. Um, a lot of people are getting a notification that their PlayStations are starting to ship now. So be on the lookout for emails as well. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that that's pretty much all the email, all the information that there is. Good luck to anyone that's trying. Uh, I'm I know my myself. I'm gonna try to get one. Um, a lot of people are asking me to, for help, so I'm trying to help some people. Yeah. Also, you know, the people need to fucking be careful. Oh, definitely. Um, now, if you're someone who already has a pre-order, um, while Sony said to people that they shouldn't be lining up outside, I'd expect one or two people that are just not going to believe that. You know, those Karens, they're going to be outside <laughs> fighting for that PlayStation. <laughs> so definitely be careful um, when you go to get one. Do not go by yourself. I've stressed that. <laughs> so much do not go by yourself to pick up your playstation if you walk out of a store and you were by yourself with a playstation <laughs> that's all i gotta say yeah man you i'm gonna have yeah I'm, I'm definitely gonna have fucking what um uh, i'm gonna have my pocket knife in my pocket the whole time like legit like i i'm not getting hurt for no playstation i'll tell you that but i will stab you if you come at me for my goddamn PlayStation. So, when I come there, I'm just going to be like, yep. Yeah, there's a lot of, um, I want to say hype around the system right now. So, there's a lot of danger that comes with that. So, stay safe, everyone that's out there trying to get a PlayStation. Or you can just play it safe and, you know, wait for, like, maybe March when Sony starts putting out some more <laughs> PlayStations. <laughs> no. Yep. Yep. And yep. the final thing, bro, I do want to ask you. Mm. What what game are you most excited about? At this point? Yeah. Demon Souls. It was Spider Man, but you know, some more information came out about Spider Man, how the game's only six hours, um, just a, there's just a bunch of stuff coming out about the game. It's not a bad game. Mm-hmm. I don't think anyone gave it a bad review. It's just it feels like Demon Souls is gonna offer more play time, so I'm more excited for that right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the sleeper, I think the sleeper on launch day is gonna be Sackboy. I'm definitely buying Sackboy, but I think a lot of people are gonna sleep on the game. Really? I 100% believe people are gonna go. Eh. <laughs> Give me that Call of Duty. Huh. Which I'm not getting Call of Duty Day 1. I don't know. My friends aren't getting Call of Duty Day 1. They're actually getting Demon Souls of all the games before Call of Duty. So, you know, that's a big statement from some people. We're talking people that mostly play sports games. So, you know, these guys are willing to buy Demon Souls over Spider-Man, over all these other things. So... No. <laughs> My most, I'm mostly excited for uh, pretty much. I'm gonna have to say Demon Souls as well, man. I can't wait. I wasn't gonna say it's, it's Assassin's Creed, but I'm like, eh, that's gonna be fun when it comes out. But Demon Souls is gonna be even more fun when it comes out, dude. Like, I cannot wait uh, for Demon Souls. Cause I saw I saw the whole opening. I was like, "Oh, okay, okay, that's gonna be fun." What the fuck? Okay, my bad. Yeah, that's gonna be super fun, and I cannot wait to um, I can't wait to see, you know, all the bosses if they made the improvements that they needed to make, and then uh, we'll go on from there. But you know. If this does well, what are you going to expect from Elden Ring? Hello? 
Uh, Galactic? Galactic? Hello? Hello? Yeah. That what the heck happened? You said what? What just happened? I have no idea. That was weird as hell. But, yeah, as I was saying, what was the last thing you heard me say? Um, you yeah, I literally had just started talking when you cut off. Well, I said, well, I understand that uh, Spider-Man, well, the fact that Spider-Man's like six hours kind of is a little bit of a, for me, you know. It's a, let, it's a letdown, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, I'm going to play it like once, platinum the game, it sounds like it's going to be super easy to platinum Spider-Man, but then after that, it's like, yo, okay, I'm probably just going to play, you know, something else, and Demon's Souls is like, going to take up 95% of my time, but one of the ones I am excited for is the Devil May Cry. I'm not gonna lie to you. Well, I'm excited for Devil May, Cry. Devil May Cry. I'm not sure if I'm gonna buy it or if you have to buy it. It depends if I have to buy it. If I have to buy it, then no. I Wait. probably am gonna buy it. I'm not gonna lie to you. Probably gonna trade because in my, I, my copy of the game just to buy the game. Because it looks like it's forty dollars out of my way. Yeah, so. like I said, I'm probably gonna trade in my game to get that version of it. Just like so a play with Virgil. And you know, say the phrase, if you want it, you'll have to take it. Then after that, it's like, okay. You know. Which is what they say in, you know, Japanese prisons, you know. I don't know if you knew that. Mm-mm. They were like, Nani? And he goes, if you want it, you'll have to take it. And then that Mm-mm. person goes, I do okay. Anywho, um, <laughs> Alright But other than that Was there anything else you wanted to talk about Today Nope Yeah, I thought so This is officially the shortest podcast we've done And I forgot to put on the background music So I am a little bit salty That being said Got some I, editing to do You said what Got some editing to do Nah fuck that I'm not doing that Opening ending done Anchor.com, of course. It's going to be on Spotify. And it's going to be on YouTube. And it's going to be on the fucking website. So, that being said, catch all of you guys later. Okay? You sexy beast, you. All of you. You know? Next podcast is going to be straight ASMR. You know? Mm-mm. Talking like this the whole time. No. Like, hey, I disagree with that. Welcome to the podcast. I'm, no. I'm Wild Wing. I am also joined by Galactic. Mm mm. Galactic, you need to turn. Yeah. We, we gotta become an ASMR podcast. No. You're gonna, you're gonna do it. You're gonna love it. You're gonna be like, mm. yo, I'm Galactic, of course. Welcome to our ASMR podcast. <laughs> mm-hmm. Once we have the mic alive, you can do it too much.